Jackson Hole is synonymous with all that is wild and untamed in the heart of the North American West, an unforgiving environment that is at once breathtaking and boundless. Our mountains are home to glory and adventure, and the generations of trailblazers who have made their pilgrimage to a place that has no equal. This is the story of Jackson Hole. On any given day, Jackson Hole makes someone a hero. When the timing is right, it could be any one of us. And it's not an exclusive club, but a metaphysical mosaic of terrain, talent, and tenacity shared by all. The bar was set high from the beginning. McAllister and Morley wanted someone to be the face of their ski school. In order to get what they wanted, the pair would have to look across the Atlantic. Joseph Pepe Stiegler was a 27-year-old Austrian world champion ski racer with gold, silver, and bronze medals to his credit. Who better to legitimize Jackson's international appeal? He loved to teach and he loved running a ski school and training instructors, but he also loved to free ski. I think that for a skier, you, you can't look past what Pepe Stiegler has done for the resort. Pepe built an unbelievable ski school, uh, led the ski school into the 90s, and to me, Pepe is the iconic skier of Jackson Hole. Pepe wasn't the only Olympian to find a home in Jackson Hole. After taking gold in the downhill and silver in the Super G at Lillehammer, Norway, Montana native Tommy Moe made his pilgrimage to the big one, where he again struck gold as an instructor, ski guide, and mountain ambassador. Tommy, I think, fit right into Jackson. He had sort of that wild spirit. Moving to Jackson, ditched his race skis and grabbed a pair of powder skis and was like a kid in a candy store. Not all heroes in Jackson are as polished and pedigreed as Peppy and Tommy. In fact, some take the shape of sweat-stained scofflaws, whose superpowers are nothing more than patchwork Gore-Tex, tattered wool, and renegade virtues. In the late 1970s, a few locals began illegally leaving the protected grounds of Jackson Hole for the wild snow that lived outside the resort's jurisdiction. Founded by a former U.S. Marine, the group called themselves the Jackson Hole Air Force, with the infamous credo, swift, silent, Deep. You know, I grew up within the ski patrol and I, you know, I knew about the Jackson Hole Air Force, but just like their slogans, you didn't hear a lot about them. They were kind of like this, this ghost organization. Many bold skiers, including Doug Coombs, would rise through their ranks and find national stardom in the world of extreme skiing. Doug himself, his spirit, you know, he kind of defined what a Jackson Hole skier is. He loved the backcountry even in the days when the backcountry wasn't open. An unbelievable skier. We knew it then, then the world got to know it later. In 1991, he won the first extreme contest in Valdez. He definitely brought that big mountain sense back from Alaska, but he always called Jackson all home. Coombs returned to Jackson and brought the inspired breath of Alaskan big mountain skiing with him. In the 90s, a budding film company saw Coombs as a catalyst to change the complexion of ski cinematography and began bringing Jackson's unsung talent to the masses. TGR just saw an opportunity with all these great skiers in the time, you know, Michael Black and uh, Rick Armstrong, Doug, just really documented the sport of free skiing. Free skiing was done, but no one really called it that. People were free skiers, they just didn't know they were. When TGR came along, pretty quickly on, they figured out that you got to work with the rock stars, and the rock star culture was just developing. So they brought all those skiers here. You know, it was a good show. TGR would show the world there's nothing level about Jackson's playing fields, but that adventure is fair game to everyone. Since the pioneering days of Betty Woolsey and Virginia Heide Cooper, several Valley locals such as A.J. Cargill, Jess Baker, Kit Delorier, Jess McMillan and Crystal Wright have all found their own glory while competing at the highest levels of skiing. Jess has done a lot for free skiing here in Jackson Hole. I think she's just, you know, always pretty happy to be out on the slopes and uh, she's a great skier. Crystal was on the U.S. ski team, ended up getting into the free skiing. It's amazing to watch her and Jess, you know, go from racing and then into big mountain competitions and every girl from Jackson seems like they've won the overall title. I think Crystal's won it. Jess has won it. The girls that ski in Jackson, they have all the, t all the talent in, in the right training area for big mountain skiing competitions. In the 1980s, snowboarding exploded in North America, 
and while many resorts stumbled over this new marvel, the sport bloomed in Jackson naturally. The all-mountain exploits of pro boarders like Rob Kingwell and Brian Agucci would in turn give rise to the international sensation, Travis Rice. The whole snowboard movement here was really interesting because it kind of went off without a flap. You know, everybody got along. When I started snowboarding, there was a really badass crew of riders here. You know, Lance Pittman, Rob Kingwell, Brian Agucci. Brian Agucci, he moved here at kind of the height of his snowboarding career and kind of committed himself to learning the ways of the mountains here. I uh, kind of heard around town there's this kid, you know, this high school kid, Travis Rice, you know, had this amazing style and started seeing him around a little bit. He blew my mind. It was like the first time we hit a jump together. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. It was like, wow, this kid is incredibly talented. You know, he really progressed the sport of snowboarding. His riding style was really, you know, it's, you know, has evolved because of, you know, the environment. He's a product of the environment.